Welcome back to the John Roberts Gaming Channel, this is John Roberts. In this match we have a special guest, fellow YouTuber Mannix. If you're watching this video I'm sure you've heard of Mannix, but if you haven't heard of Mannix, then when you're through watching this video and liking and sharing and subscribing, then I recommend that you head over to Mannix's channel and do the same there. So Mannix vs John Roberts, episode 1, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoy. Okay, our game with Mannix. Very excited about this. Let's uh, do our typical opening move. Four infantry, two tanks. And I'm just going to do typical 12 and 9. Okay, so in this case, the double and triple check is done for us. We just need to see the 9 and the 12. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, well, West Russia was a little weak. Five, six, seven, eight units left there. And you can hit with three, four, five, six, seven. Should be pretty safe. But we'll put a, put the, uh, the gun in there just to make it extra safe. I have a gun in Ukraine. I mean, uh, Caucasus. Ukraine worked out. It, it worked out. We only have one tank left. Having two or three is better, of course. But uh, it, it was looking like... Uh, I was going to have to retreat with him still having his aircraft, and I decided to go one more. I only had two land units left, and he had three units left. But one of them was a bomber. It wasn't very likely he was going to hit all three, and as it turned out, he only hit one. So we get the territory. The tank, of course, is lost, but we took out the bomber, and that's uh, very important. Uh, we're going to keep this anti-aircraft here in Caucasus, since uh, it would be a waste to put it here. Two units is not much different than one unit. All are normal non-coms. Get everything over, and we'll leave the one in Bariatia. Make sure we get this uh, sub C zone seven double and triple check the uh, defense profiles. Lone defenders will submerge, but with a fleet they will remain. We want that. Okay, let's just look it over one more time, because as you know, I make a lot of mistakes, and I don't want to do that against Mannix. Okay. That looks good. Tanks in Russia. Infantry in Caucasus. All very standard stuff. Let's see what you got in store for us. Okay, so it's UK round one. Let's take a look at how his first round went. He bought the bomber. Seven infantry, two artillery. Took Karelia lightly. Got the destroyer and took Transjordan with one artillery. Went for season 10 and didn't work out. Season 7, I mean, he did uh, very well in season 7. And took the Ukraine, lost an in infantry doing so. Put all his fighters here. Finland, all the tanks in the Baltic state, Bulgaria, any aircraft, move the units into Libya, and the one move it into Algeria, place the bomber and two infantry in Italy, and five infantry and two artillery in Germany. I guess the bomber can have range here, 
end here from Italy, and uh, he's hoping to have the uh, transport left, I suppose. Okay, so UK is gonna make a typical buy: the destroyer, an aircraft carrier, and three infantry. Because I'm gonna try to keep a fleet up here. He's got five, six, can hit this. And if he has this submarine left over, if we have Allied Placement Game 1 luck here, if any of you remember that game, I had the worst Season 7 I've ever seen in my life. Hopefully that does not happen again. I'm gonna do this with three. I wanna get this transport, and I really wanna get this battleship. Well, the transport is really what I want to get, but you gotta get the battleship to get the transport. And we'll do that with those three, hopefully. Cruiser and aircraft carrier. Okay, okay. Let's see if we can take care of this. Three on one should be fine. Okay. I think that looks good. May the dice gods be with us. Alright, so that all worked out very well. I actually only had two units lost in that whole combat round. I lost the bomber here in C-Zone 17. Only had one fuel left. I'd rather have these two fighters that I can land here in Persia. And I lost one infantry here in Transjordan, so those all worked out well. Send the transport to 33. He can get it. He does have to chase after it, however. I did think about going for Borneo, but it's not something I typically do. I don't know if Mannix has any tricks up his sleeve, but he's a pretty straightforward player from what I've seen. So I'm going to play a little more conservatively. All right, make sure the two fighters are in C-Zone 7. Leave this transport in C-Zone 10 and just move the, this infantry into Canada. Now we can transport these two units next round. The aircraft carrier and cruiser are left in 61. We leave this in Burma as a target. Remember, we like to leave some little targets for the Japanese here. Okay. One from Australia, one from New Zealand. Send them to 41 Cruiser, the submarine. We do our double and triple check. Everything looks good. Okay, aircraft carrier and destroyer in C Zone 7. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got five, six. Let's see what he decides to do with that. Three infantry in India, and that looks good. Let's see what Japan's got in store for us. Okay, so it's USA round one. Let's uh, take a look at what Japan did. Three transports, three infantry. Very standard opening. He got this transport and he put his fleet up here. I will not be able to get that. Uh, I was able to take care of my uh, cruiser and any aircraft. Uh, he did lose a destroyer. Interesting. I guess he didn't bring the, the battleship or I got two hits on him. Uh, it took Yunnan. It took Burma. No units lost. It took Anway. He lost four infantry there. That's a little unlucky for him. I always hate it when that battle goes that way. And left two infantry in Bariatia. Moved the submarine. Infantry fighters in Thailand. This little fleet over here, I will not be able to get this fleet. 
with just two fighters. I had a bomber and a fighter uh, in Japan. He's taken a, like a, a position here where he looks like he's gonna attempt to go this way, perhaps. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. He probably figures that uh, I'm gonna send pretty much everything to Germany, and he's probably right. Three infantry, three transports. Okay, so USA, I am actually going to uh, buy another aircraft carrier. So my hope is to be able to do a Finland shot, but when Germany has a bomber, Sometimes it could take a few turns for that to really happen. A med shuck, I think, is the preferred meta at this point. I always, at some point, mess up something logistical when it comes to a med shuck. See, with a Finland shuck, you really only need to defend one sea zone. But it could take me till round three, round four, to be able to defend this properly. With the med shuck, you could start kind of ferrying troops over almost immediately. Not this round, but probably next round. But you need to be able to defend 13 and another sea zone, 15 or 14. So I'm going to buy another aircraft carrier, because we all know US does have the fighters for it. I'm going to get two transports, because we're going to need transports. I'm going to get another fighter, and I'm going to save four IPCs. That looks good. Now as for combat, I'm really not going to do anything at all with the United States. So no combat. Alright, so let's make all our typical defensive positionings. Where do we want this fighter? We want this fighter in Persia. I don't want this fighter in Persia. I'm going to land this fighter here in Caucasus. It should be safe here in Caucasus. Or wait, maybe. Let's land it in West Russia. This will be a point that I'm obviously going to want to defend. I think this fighter will be fine here. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be fine there. Okay, let's start moving everything. Let's get you guys up here. Let's get some units up here to get ready to transport. Get the rest of the units over for next round. Bomber in UK. Land the fighter. This fighter we can land there. This aircraft carrier is coming over with this fighter, and this fighter is going to Canada. Destroyer 55. This uh, the sub we're gonna just leave here. He's good right there for now. These three, the sea zone 19. No, oh, my anti-aircraft gun. Okay, let's look around. I think I moved everything. So, okay, that looks good. So we'll just mobilize these units. Aircraft carrier, fighter, two destroyers. Sorry, two transports. All right, let's send it over to Soviet Union. Okay, so Soviet, round two. Let's make our purchases. Eight infantry and one artillery. Sounds good. All right, so let's take Kwangtung just to be annoying. It's not plausible to take this, so we'll retreat from here. Okay, let's take back Karelia, because he definitely wants that. And then let's take Baltic to limit the range of trans his transports. His tanks, we'll use two of these infantry. Each one of these will get one fighter. So it's three on one in each. I'm only doing two trades. I know I could take Ukraine as well, but uh, then I'm going to be using more units than I want to use up. I want to accumulate more units. One infantry and me getting two IPCs is not worth using up two infantry. That's only three, four, five. Two infantry costs six. Uh, we do want to make some trades to make him have to attack us back, but we don't want to overuse our units. We need to accumulate units against uh, this German player. And we all know Mannix is a uh, decent player. I consider him to be a better player than me, so I'm trying to play a little tightly here. So I think those two look good. Strong and strong. May the dice gods be with us.
Okay, so Corellia did not work out, and the part that really kind of stinks about that is these nine tanks can now reach West Russia, so we have to count it up. Let's see, there's nine, ten, fifteen, sixteen can reach West Russia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18. We have to put basically everything in there to hold it now. So we will do that. And let's move these units over. Make sure we have a unit here for trading. We'll take two of these and leave one. That will bring them all. He's got bombers, fighters. Let's just bring them all. He's going to take these anyway. I'd rather save the infantry. We already wasted an infantry down here. And two infantry got wasted up here at the cost of one infantry and not getting the territory. Okay, all our units are moved, so... Let's mobilize our units. Ukraine should be safe if I put four units in Ukraine. You can come in with one, two. These fighters cannot reach, the tanks cannot reach. So two on four, I'll take those odds. And the rest in Russia, okay. So let's see what Germany's got in store for us. Okay, let's see what Maddox did. This is UK round two. So for his Germany round two, he purchased 14 infantry. Failed in Belarus. A little bit of luck for us, I suppose. And he failed in Egypt. So, actually a slightly lucky uh, round. I mean, it looks like he went... Oh wow, he went five fighters in there. And I lost. I had two infantry there. He brought in five fighters somehow. I held out long enough to take out his two infantry so he couldn't get the territory. This was a one-on-one. -on -one. So a stroke of luck. Alright, so we moved over to Algeria. I guess in anticipation of uh, American forces. He has his uh, aircraft positioned in a way where it would be difficult for me right now to get to Finland. He kind of set it up so that I have to go into the Mediterranean. He knows it's a more difficult strategy to upkeep. All right. Reinforced Germany, Poland. Stacked up Karelia very well. I calculated this. I'm going to have to uh, dead zone West Russia. I, I, I can't hold it against this stack of tanks. I'm going to have to pull a maneuver here to... Uh, to hold West Russia. Alright. Baltic states. And mobilized his units, all infantry. Almost the capacity, only two in Italy. Alright, let's see what we can purchase here. I think I want to purchase a fighter, because I think every one of my fighters is going into West Russia. Let's see, one, two, Three, four. I think every one of my fighters is going into West Russia. Now if I buy another transport, I only have 14 left. It's only enough for three. So I don't think I'm getting a transport this round. Hmm. Let's see. If I got, for India, one tank and two infantry. Leaves nine. Means I could get a transport. Because I already have the units here, don't I? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three transports, yeah. So, okay, okay, that works. Save two IPCs. Okay, I'm happy with that. That looks good. Okay, let's take that. Because I'm I'm gonna be taking this with the, uh, the US troops this coming round also. I also have to make sure not to publish this till a uh, couple days after. <laughs> okay, so I can't take Burma, can I? One, two, three, four. No, I need these fighters here. This is not going to make it. I am going to take France. And then I'm going to have to take Northeast Europe with one of these transports, because he has five fighters up here. One, two, three. We need to get rid of these landing points for him, because I'm not going to have two fighters. I'm only going to have one fighter, because these two fighters are going into West Russia and I only have one fighter coming out of this IC to replace these two fighters. 
and with the bomber and these five fighters he could possibly make an assault so i don't have to worry about that if i just eliminate this landing point and this landing point then he only has the bomber that could reach so we'll just create a little pin here just to make sure i don't forget but i mean you know i don't typically forget things so <laughs> All right, is there anything else I want to do with the United Kingdom? Okay, that uh, that looks good, I guess. I don't see anything else. Look over a third time. Make it a double and triple check. Okay, so no combat. Just a couple of soft captures. Okay, so non-combat moves. Let's make sure we get every fighter we can into West Russia. I calculated this as about 82 or 83% chance of holding this. I actually am very comfortable with that. In attack, I would want better odds than that. A game-changing attack, maybe 83, 85, I'll take it. But in defense, anything over 80, I feel is pretty... Uh, pretty strong and I will uh, take that if you lose an 80% chance you're just getting bad luck anyway it, it could be a 90% chance you're probably gonna lose it at that point anyway if you're getting rolls like that I, I feel sometimes we take the calculator and we just want this number to be this perfect number and the dice are just not always you know reflecting that number that we're trying to get and this is a very important uh, region to control so I'm not going to say, oh, it's only an 80% chance, let's pull out of there. You know, risking fighters and, you know, our, our tanks and pretty much our whole army here. But I'm pretty sure she'll hold. This is the type of battle where if you lose it, you're probably just not going to fare well. And you, you weren't going to fare well if it was a 90% chance. So let's just hold it. We'll do everything we can to hold it. We'll move this tank to India and this artillery this way. Take this infantry down in the Belgian Congo, bring it up to the Sudan, bring this fleet down, can't leave the uh, transport absolutely naked, hmm. and the transport here, I like to go to C-Zone 22, I feel there's, uh, you know, you can get to 13, you can get to 23, you can get to 24, you can get to 27, so I like them here. I always unload whenever I can, even though there's a 0% chance of him getting this. Yeah, he has no landing point for this bomber. It's impossible for him to get this transport, but he might as well just land the units anyway. Bring the cruiser up with them. Get the sub up here. Let's recheck our defense profiles. Let's see how they're set up. Probably going to want bombers first. I think there's a US bomber that I'm going to end up putting in West Russia. Want bombers first. I love that they have the bomber here like this could ever happen. Aircraft carriers. Then cruiser then. Yeah, that's good. Alright, alright, alright. I believe that's everything. I'm not moving these units. I think I've moved everything else. I don't see any other... Highlighted units. Okay. Mobilization. So a fighter out here. Transport. And then three land units. He doesn't have a real threat on India yet, so this is pretty safe. Well, let's see what uh, Japan's got uh, in store for us. USA round two. Let's look at Japan. Two more transports and six infantry. That gives him six transports. So we have to watch India. We may have to abandon India sooner than later. We'll have to see. That's a lot of transports. Keep an eye on what he's trying to do here. So his combat, he took all the free land. Soviet Far East, Yakut, Xinjiang, Sheshwan. And he took back Quang Tung. Okay, C-Zone 36, Yunnan, Sheshwan, the three fighters in Anwe. I don't know why he landed the three fighters. Interesting. 
Uh, French Indochina. It mobilizes units all out of Japan, of course. So USA, another two transports and another destroyer. All right. Now let's get six infantry and one artillery to spend all USA's dough. Looks good, looks good. So the map note. USA must take. So we'll do it like this. No, no, no. No, no, no. Just one. And then like this. Take Morocco. Send some more. Four on four. Should be alright. Should be alright. Alright, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go on a bombing run, and then if the bomber remains, we'll land him in West Russia. This is the only unit the United States could get to West Russia. Okay, so may the dice gods be with us. Okay, so two IPC damage. Uh, with the risk of the bomber involved, that is actually the expected outcome, 2.1 or 2.2, something like that. So I'll take two anytime. We'll land you in West Russia. You are gonna go to Caucasus. No tanks here, so we don't need any blocking. Bring this sub up to 64. Keep an eye on him, keep him honest over here. The second anti-aircraft gun. Two more infantry over to Eastern Canada with one more transport. Okay, C-Zone 13, let's defend C-Zone 13. C-Zone 13 is one of the C-Zones I'm gonna wanna be able to hold in this game. The other one is gonna be C-Zone 15. That's why we need to move all of this over as quickly as possible. And get you to C-Zone 12. The transport will go to C-Zone 11, for obvious reasons. These only reach C-Zone 18, so that's fine. Just get them there. Get them there as quickly as possible. Two fighters in Eastern Canada. Land them in Iceland. Okay, double and triple check. Not moving this. There are no more highlighted units. I'm not moving this. All right, looks good. Let's mobilize our units. Atlantic, Atlantic, C-Zone 11. We get the land out in the east, and we send it over to Soviet Union. So that's it for this video. Please join us for our next video where we will continue with our match versus Mannix. Please like, share, and subscribe and do all those wonderful things that you do. And as always, thank you for watching.